Thank you so much for joining us again today. My name is Ashley Childs and I'm the Family Consumer Science Agent in Thomas County. And I have been invited to present with Becca Stackhouse, the Family Consumer Science Agent in Crisp County. So this is part of our Made at Home Healthy Oils edition. So this is a series that's going on throughout the entire month of October. Um, and so we're gonna be just discussing different types of cooking oils, provide you with some tasty recipes. We'll talk a little bit about the nutrition and flavor profile of some different cooking oils. And then Becca is actually going to demonstrate how to prepare these recipes. So today our first, today our focus is gonna be on pecan oil. But first let's review some nutrition information for your health in case you missed our last session. So, we refer to these as heart healthy cooking oils because the dietary guidelines recommends that adult women get one and a half tablespoons and adult men get two to two and a half tablespoons of oils every day. The FDA or the Food and Drug Administration recommends that 30% or less of calories from the foods that you consume daily should be from fat and fewer than 7% from saturated fat. So saturated fats are generally those that are going to be solid at room temperature. So think about like butter, for example. Um, but then there are a few exception, exceptions like coconut oil, palm oils, um, or dairy fat, which remains as a liquid at room temperature. So there are lots of cooking oils that you can choose from whenever you go into a store and it can be a little overwhelming. We're just gonna walk through a couple of plant-based options and ways to use these different oils. And again, just the flavor profiles and the nutrition profiles for you so you know that you're making a heart healthy choice. So unsaturated fats are gonna be your, your better choice for fats. And so these foods are gonna be like your vegetable oils, soft tub margarines, olive oils, grapeseed, fish, nuts and avocados. These are going to be the ones that foods that you typically hear that are good for brain health, maybe it reduces inflammation, um, but specifically they are good for your LDL cholesterol, which is your low density lipoprotein, which is going to be your bad cholesterol. So we want to limit our LDL cholesterol levels because they actually deliver cholesterol to the walls of blood vessels and can cause narrowing of the vessel. So LDL, keep it low. LDL greatly affects your risk for a heart attack and it, it is a better gauge of your risk than total cholesterol. So the lower your LDL, the lower your risk. Now your HDL cholesterol is the high density lipoprotein and it's often referred to as the good cholesterol because it helps to remove cholesterol from your arteries and is involved in making different substances that the body needs. And again, you can see the examples here. Although they are the healthy fats, you still want to use them in small amounts and use them sparingly because fat is still fat. So just keep in mind how much fat that each of these items or products have and incorporate them into your daily diet, but still use them in small amounts. Now, saturated fats are the ones that you really want to limit. So they can raise your LDL levels. So again, we wanna keep LDL levels low. Saturated fats come mostly from animal products such as butter, beef, pork, and dairy fats, but can also come from tropical oils like coconut, palm, and palm kernel oils. And these are gonna be the ones that you find in your treat foods. So your processed foods, your um, prepackaged foods, and then that leads us into talking about trans fats. So these are ones that you want to avoid if possible. So trans fat can be made from vegetable oils through a process called hydrogenation. Trans fat is naturally found in some small amounts in some animal products like meat, whole milk, and milk products. But you can also find it again in those processed foods like cakes, cookies, crackers, icings, margarines, microwave popcorn, and then other packaged baked goods, snacks, and frozen foods. So these are gonna be the ones that increase your risk for heart disease. So again, definitely make sure that you limit these. It's not the ones that 
um, you want to make sure that you include in your daily diet by no means. So just review your unsaturated fats, good. Saturated fats, not so good. Chains fats, bad. So some tips for choosing healthy oils and fats include using liquid oils like olive, canola, or corn um, in place of solid fats like butter, shortening, coconut oil, or lard. Incorporating nuts and seeds into your daily routine. You can use them as a snack, put them as a, a topping on salad. It's another good way to get some healthy fats in. And then choosing fish that are rich in omega-3 fats, such as salmon, trout, and herring. And then limiting those saturated fats from your processed meats, like sausage, bologna, pepperoni. If you choose ground beef or turkey that's 90% lean or more, that's gonna be a good option for you, again, to limit the amount of fat you consume. Limiting ice cream, baked goods, heavy creams, those are gonna be the ones that contain, again, the saturated fats and potentially trans fats. Choosing baked, steamed, or broiled over fried foods is always a good idea. And then reading the nutrition labels to avoid partially hydrogenated oils or trans fats in packaged foods like baked goods, snacks, and then some frozen foods too. So today we're going to learn about pecan oil or pecan, depending on how you say it. Um, I've always grown up calling it pecan, so that's what I'll refer to it as. But pecan oil is a medium smoke point, smoke point, which means that it's best suited for light sauteing, sauces, and then low heat baking. It has a rich, nutty flavor. So when you're trying to use it in recipes, just keep that flavor profile in mind. Um, as far as your nutrition profile, it contains a little over 90% monounsaturated fats, 38-ish um, percent polyunsaturated. Again, unsaturated fats are good. The mono versus poly, that kind of gets into the chemical structure of the unsaturated fats. Um, but just know unsaturated fats are going to be your, your good ones. And then your saturated fats, it is a little higher. And that's at 12.1%. The recipe that is going to be featured today is definitely going to feature some Georgia grown products and ones that are in season right now. So this is an apple pecan salad with apple cider, pecan vinaigrette. So you're definitely gonna be getting your apples and your pecans in here. But we're using in this recipe, um, we'll be using some candied pecans, just as a topping, some spring mix, again, some apples, which are in season right now. Um, and then we'll be making a dressing using the pecan oil. So Becca is gonna show us how to make that recipe. Welcome to Made at Home. I am Becca Stackhouse, your family and consumer science county extension agent for the University of Georgia in Crisp County. And so I am here to bring you some fun facts today. We are going to make a vinaigrette to go over a spring salad that's got cranberries in it and apples in it. So we're going to specifically cover the dressing. Um, you are going to need our all over farm oils and we are going to be using that pecan oil today so we are going to start and i'm going to use just a glass like this it's got my measuring on the side so i need two thirds of a cup thirds of, of, a cup of the pecan oil the pecan oil Start with getting our pecan oil. So that is our Oliver Farms pecan oil. We are gonna add in about a fourth a cup of local honey. So just if you've got your favorite honey, find a local beekeeper. Get some of that honey that's local. Get some of that honey that's local. We're gonna add that. We're gonna add, that. add in We're gonna add about a teaspoon, about of, a salt. teaspoon of salt. Then our pepper and our ginger powder. Our pepper and our ginger powder. Then we're gonna add in gonna add apple in cider vinegar. We're adding in a recipe, a or that three, a third a cup of our apple cider vinegar. 
third a cup of our pineapple juice. We're gonna add in some fresh lime juice. So we're making a vinaigrette to go on our salad that's got our apples. Did you know apples are in season right now? Best time to eat a fruit is when it's in season. So make sure you grab some. And another beneficial thing about your apples is you can hit your red and your green part of your rainbow to help get some of those uh, vitamins and minerals in your body. So we're adding in roughly three tablespoons of lime juice. And I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick. our vinaigrette together. So, whisk it together. Then, we're going to take some of our, take some we, are of our Ellis we are not Ellis Brother candied, candied pecans. And we're going to take our candied pecans and put a few onto our spring salad here. So these are locally Georgia pecans, but the nice thing about our We Are Nuts pecans and our pecan oil from Oliver Farms, both of these you can go online and have them shipped to you. So you can be anywhere. So we've got our salad. We've got our salad made. We're just going to drizzle a little bit on top. And you are ready to serve. So simple, fast. Did you know it was that easy to make dressing, salad dressing in your house? So, let me know how you like it. Let me know how you enjoy it. a bonus Thanks recipe. So, not only do we have pecan oil, but we also have pecan flour. So, in this recipe, we're using half a cup of pecan flour. And then it's going to be topped with candied pecans. As Welcome to Made at Home. I am Becca Stackhouse, your Family and Consumer Science County Extension agent. Thanks for joining me and today we're going to be making brownies. We're not going to be using your typical flour that you find in the grocery store. We are going to be using a pecan flour and our pecan flour comes from Oliver Farms and so they have pecan oil and with those extras that where they get the oil press from, they have leftovers, so they make different varieties of flours. So it's a natural gluten-free flour that you can use in your baking and in your cooking. So we've got pecan flour that's gonna make our brownies today. And then, so those are from Oliver Farms, and then we are nuts, we're gonna use those to put on top of our pecan brownies. So, you ready to get started? We got started with, we have two or a cup and a half of butter in our bowl here. We're going to need sugar, which I forgot. We're gonna need about three fourths a cup of sugar which is about all the sugar I have left in my container. So, we're gonna add that sugar in. After our sugar, we're gonna add in a teaspoon of vanilla. After that, we're gonna add in two eggs. Now, I'm making these for somebody that does not eat eggs, so instead of eggs, we're gonna be using whoop, our supplement a flax seed for our eggs. So otherwise you'd be putting two eggs in. Then we're gonna put in an eighth a cup of cocoa powder as well as our baking powder, which is about a fourth of teaspoon. 
That pecan flower we talked about, we're gonna add that in. Then we're also gonna add in an eighth a teaspoon of salt. And guess what? We are ready to stir our pecan brownies. So it's a different way to make your brownies. Just make sure that you're aware when you're making brownies and you're using some tree nuts that if you've got someone coming over, make sure that they're not allergic. So we need a little more liquid in our brownies. So we're gonna add just a little bit of our pecan oil to keep that pecan taste going to our brownies. And then we're just going to add a touch of milk. So how do you like your brownies? Do you like the inside of the brownie, the outside? My favorite is when it is the outside, the crusty part, the warm part, right when they come out of the oven. So as we got started on this, we preheated our oven to 350 degrees, and then our brownies are gonna cook anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes. But remember, you're gonna wanna make sure that you check those brownies so that they don't overcook. So we're gonna add our brownies to our pan. Actually, before we do that, I like them to be a little more runny than they're coming out. How they're coming out now, you might get a little bit more of a fudgy brownie, but we're gonna get a little bit more of a fluffy brownie. So we added about three fourths of a cup, whoop, because we make a mess in the kitchen. It's okay to make a mess, right? So we added about three fourths of a cup of milk to our brownies. And my milk is almond milk, but you can use whatever milk happens to be in your refrigerator. So that looks a lot better brownie batter to me. So we're gonna add our brownie batter in to our pan. And our pan's already been sprayed with some olive oil to keep it, give it that grease. So, what we're gonna do that's fun and brings in our We Are Nuts products is we're gonna place some pecans on the top of our brownies. So we're gonna take them, I'm gonna break them up just a little bit with my hands, and we're just gonna kinda sprinkle them amongst the top just to add in a little more of a crunch on our pecans when we are all done. When they're all done baking. So, all of the products that you're seeing used are Georgia grown products. Uh, we Are Nuts is in South Georgia and so is Oliver Farms. But the nice thing about them is that you can order them from anywhere you are. So, order them, use them as Christmas, that's coming up. Use them in your holidays as snacks around. So just keep those things in mind as you are preparing and having some fun in your scrumptious smelling. Can you smell it? Our pecan brownies have finished baking and they are ready to be that nice and gooey thing that you serve. So, let 
let's grab a plate. And we're going to slice just a little sliver. There you got it. You got our pecan flour brownie. So remember that pecan flour, it is from Oliver Farms pecan flour and the flour comes off of that oil that they're making for the pecans. So the pecan oil gives us the pecan flour and then we added some We Are Nuts pecans on top. Enjoy and let us know what you think of the recipe. Thank you for joining me with this episode of Made at Home. Have a fantastic fall. So thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Healthy Oils, um, the Made at Home series. So there is some information here on this slide about one, how you can contact Becca or myself, and then also where you can order these Georgia Grown products that were featured in this presentation. So we do have a short evaluation that we would love for you to complete. Um, it's in the link here on the slide, but also we are gonna post it on our Facebook pages as well. So be on the lookout for that. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Becca and she's going to show you how to make our salad with the apple cider pecan vinaigrette and then also the brownies using the pecan flour. So with that, I'll let her take it away. <laughs> 